I'll show you how to make a snare to catch a bear, a cougar, anything you can eat. Ropes are pretty much easy. You find them, find them everywhere. Everybody's got a chunk of rope in the back of an old beat up truck. This is not something that you're going to find. You know, you go to the store and buy it, keep it in your pack if you want. They all fray out. Never cut a rope. The metal? I found if you got to use a piece of rope for something, just wrap up the excess instead of cutting a piece off. Then you got, then you got to tie a knot in it to make it whole again. Right. Sheep shank. Easy one to remember. It looks like a square knot. Tie two ropes together. Okay. This is a sheep shank. Well, you can tell it's a sheep shank, like a square knot. That'll tie two ropes together. You can do a half hitch on the other end of it to help cinch it in. That's your basic tie them together. If you want to make the two ropes go together and be a strong knot, that'll, that'll hold 90% of its knot strength. Most ropes have three tethers going together. Get enough of this pulled apart. Come back in it. That's the sign of a rope that's still got life in it. And start this knot. Um, danged if I can think of the name of it right now. Every other goes through. This is basically what you're doing. You can look it up on any of your sites on the computer as to how to do this. Once you start it, this is what it'll look like. Every every other one it comes in threes. You, you skip over, you go in. You skip over, you go in. And then you bring them down and you tighten them up to where it creates a little knot right here. Something you have to work with. It's not something you can just pick up and start playing with and have it the first time. It's, it's every other skip over every other, one, every other one. And you take your, your next and you go over and in, over and in, over and in, and pretty soon you'll, you'll tie them all together. It's to look it up on the computer. And that's to make a loop on the end of your rope? That's to make a loop. And that loop will come in handy for your snares. Um, as you start going, you'll see it starts tying in. You can buy them that way, or if you're just out in the woods and you need to make an eye, you got to make an eye. It'll start feeding back to itself. Most look it up on the computer for marine knots. Uh, your monkey knot for throwing a, a rope across a creek or a heavy, you know, take a rock in it. It's a nightmare to learn. There's little tricks. But the uh, tying it in to make an eye, that's the big thing. Like I said, it's not something that you're going to get right away. It might not be pretty right away, but it's going to be useful. The main thing to remember is over and under. And you're going to get it screwed up like I just did. <laughs> Probably more than once. Practice. Sit at home instead of watching TV. Practice. It's going to get a little ugly at first, but it's going to follow in. It's going to start looking like a knot. You get lost, just don't worry about it. It's going to hold its strength. As it follows, it's going to hold strength. It's going to come together. This one's looking really ugly. But it'll be really strong. But the idea of it is, is it's going to be strong. It won't pull out. It's going to hold together. It's oh, not going to pull out. So either way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the idea of it is, when you get to it, you need that eye for several things. Mm -hmm. um, this right here alone will feed you. This is part of your uh, your trip wires on the ground in a wallered log with some oils, some leftover foods. Mm -hmm. 
That's why this. Oils and leftover foods. Raccoons are edible. Tastes like crap, but they're edible. Bears are edible. They carry a lot of grease, things that you'll need to boil down and use the oils. Waterproofing, cooking. Bear oil is one of the best. Bear grease. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, any net is a clove hitch and a half hitch. Any fishing net, I make my own fishing nets. It's a clove hitch and a half hitch. Once you go around the ring, you just come down, do a V, you got a clove hitch and a half hitch on the next one. Clove hitches are pretty easy. Do a wrap. Do a wrap, they come together. They look pretty much like so. And then a half hitch is just everybody's favorite little oops. Mm -hmm. It only takes the two, a clove hitch and a half hitch. You want to make a, a winch setup, like a lot of farmers do, uh, a, quick win a quick winch setup. We've got some, hold, this line's being held. Here. Um, it's a quick. Okay. Which uh -huh. a lot of people like the bowl at the uh, uh, the bowling. So hard not to tie. That one comes out real nice. Mm -hmm. Come across here, pull it, then this line can come to it, and it it's a strong knot, and <laughs> it's not going to come out until you pull it out. And you're not putting knots in your line that's going to. Be a pain. It's going to stay there. A lot of people will do this. Try to get that out of your line later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ridiculous. After you pulled you, on two tons. Right. Right. <laughs> you, an, you know, it's uh, hand over, and then later when you want to pull it back out, no matter how tight you get it, it's going to pull back out. Mm -hmm. um, you want to get down a mountain. Your clove hitch at the end of the line, around a tree. Go around, kind of cross over, go around again, pull them back between. That's the one I showed you here a second ago, where you're around the tree, hold the line here, come back around the tree, run it through. That will hold your body weight and then some. And then to secure it, just do a lash over. This is a half hitch. Okay. Mm -hmm. That'll hold you on the tree. You can take your lines right around your waist to get down a tree. You're going to build a line like this, take a separate line from the main line. Bring it through. This one here is where you want to do this. The same on this line. Turn it over. You can bring this tight right up against your crotch. Yeah, I mean, there's hills all over the place. You want to get down or you want to get up into a tree. This is where a simple little Never tie a knot you can't take out so you can reuse your line. Mm. That's gonna hold your body weight actually. You can do you can loop over a couple of times. This one here is not the knot you want. That's where you hook into main your main line. Mm -hmm. And then you can bring it up and hold both lines together and let the other line come behind you and just go down a mountain if you want. And you squeeze the rope together and it'll stop here or slow you down as you go down the mountain. But it's not gonna hold you unless you stay up straight up. The tighter you get this around the waist, the more it'll support you here uh, against your hips. Everybody, Everybody wants to get down a mountain. You try to do it on your own and you're gonna fall. Put in your butt crack like a G-string basically? Yeah, you're gonna fall. <laughs> and it's, it's gonna support you, it's gonna hold your weight. It's it's not gonna come undone on you. Yeah, you're pulling the table. You know. <laughs> so your knife is gonna be the knife next thing. Okay. It's a good steal. But this is the line that's gonna actually do your break. You can hold it here and then pull it back here, 
But if it slips out of your hand, you're going to go down. You're going to go down hard. Don't let it, your legs flip up and come out from underneath you. Because now you're going to be hanging upside down. Don't ever tie a knot that you can't untie. These cheap rope was they're not forgiving. Don't get them near any flame because they will catch fire. <laughs> oh, so they make good tinder too. <laughs> They'll come right back out. Every time you do it, back of a truck, tying down a load. Your bowling is hard. People can't do it. This one you can do. And it's the same as the bowling, basically. Do the hole around the tree thing. Who can remember that? Mm -hmm. It's a winch knot. Every trucker uses it, tying down a load of hay or whatever you got. You can use that in multiple things. You can tie off where? <clears throat> where your finger is? On that loop? That's where you tie off? That's where you tie off. Oh, okay. When you come back to it, that's your strength right there. Every time. And instead of trying to pull this all the way through, just do this. It'll, it'll come back out. Or you can just go right to here like this. Tie a loop over it. It's a knot that'll come right back out. That's not going to tie over. That's your tie over. Mm -hmm. You can go down to another and come back up. That's not, it's not going to come out. It works on its own weight. The name of it, you won't remember. Because you can't remember. <laughs> right. Trucker's knot. It's a trucker's knot, but it comes out every time. You'll use that multiple reasons. Your eye loops. Not exactly easy to remember. This one's looking ugly. Basically over and under. Skip over. Skip under. I got this one too far is what I did. And you can take two lines, put them together the same way. Just go up one line and then take the other, go up the other line and then pull it all tight. And you'll have, crabbers use it a lot. Yeah, when they're connecting. Connecting two lines together. You got one guy on board, does it all the time. I haven't done it in a year, so it's pretty ugly. What about the marriage knot too? You need to do that one? Marriage knot. See, names are escaping me right now. Uh, it's where the two pieces of rope come together and the knot is laced up to where the... That's what I'm talking about. ...tether rope is this way and the tether rope right, is this right. way. I don't remember right. exactly that's, how to tie that's it. That's the marriage knot. It's, um, and if you can't remember how to do it, the heck with it. If you can't remember that and you want to marry two ropes together, like I said... That square knot works really good. It's, it's actually... Not called a square knot. Square knot. This is sheep shank. Where you can put two ropes together. If you have a long rope and you want to make that area shorter, that's a fun one. <coughs> you want to make that rope shorter, you don't want to cut your rope. And you want to be able to reuse it. You're going to make your rope shorter and still hold a lot of strength. Wow. Don't cut your rope. Yep. Wow. That'll hold the weight. Then when you want that knot out. Wow. Wow. Nice. You don't have to cut your rope. Don't cut your rope. Do that you one again real quick, later. Bob. What's that? Can you do that one again real quick? Yeah. I want to see that again. Okay. You got your rope. You got a loop. It's just like a half hitch. Okay. Shortens your rope right up. Don't cut your rope. Might save your life later. Yep. That's sweet. I like that one. Yeah. That one and the trucker's knot seem like great. Yeah, ones. The trucker's knot and this one. Don't ever cut your rope. If you can get by without cutting your rope, that's awesome. Don't. Mm -hmm. Once you cut it, you Putting it back together is a pain. You're going to sit down around the fire where you're trying to keep warm and try to tie that. And 
save your life. This one here is really important when you're trapping to be able to tie it back into each other because you need that eye. Um, bears, like I said, bears are curious. So what I use this for is I'll make an eye in one end and I'll put it out. I'll dangle it over, a little brush around it, put some food in there, and then uh, just a matter of a piece of fishing line stuck in a twig here to a twig here, a notch cut in the side of it, a notch cut in the side of the tree, and then the little rope coming up over and hooking to, you've all looked it up, hooking to the strong side which is next to the tree. Mm -hmm. The animal comes along, trips the wire, flips up, heavy rock holding your main line, drags the animal's leg up in the air, and they'll work themselves half to death, try to get free of it. And a bear, they just, they pull, they don't push, they pull, mm. to try to get loose of something. And the harder they pull, the more it tightens up. And that's gonna hold a bear. Leave them a while, they're gonna bleed to death. Mm -hmm. um, or you can get close enough with a stick and stab them and get away from it without getting hit, cut, <laughs> bit. Uh, any other knots you can think of, guys? Mm -hmm. I'll set up a snare later and show you. Don't forget that one. That'll save your tush. And again, don't tie a knot you can't untie. Do that one one more time, Bob. I want to see it. Slow. Loop. Bring it up through. <coughs> That's the trucker's knot. That's the trucker's knot. Tony's used it millions of times. I've used it millions and millions of times. So on the net making, when you, you do the full hitch and the half hitch to continue to make the net, you just do again the full hitch to half hitch and continue that? Or do you continue with just a half hitch going down and out? When you've got a, a, like a crab pot, you're going to make a crab pot, you just uh, go over, tie your first knot, which is going to be a, just a half hitch, and then go around, come back up, tie a clove hitch, go over, come back down, tie a clove hitch, which is... <coughs> Just two lines coming together over each other. You know, you clove hitch, mm -hmm. then wrap it with a half hitch under it, and you go up to the next knot. And you can gauge that, like in a, in a net, you're gonna make a net. Gauge it by two fingers, however big you want your net to be. When you come up again, it's gonna be a diamond shape in there. So if you use a two finger, then you're gonna have a four finger hole. Um, one of these days, I'll, I'll make a video on it and post it on your guys' site so you can see how to make a crab pot, how to make a net. Awesome. I use uh, a lot of yellow strings so you can visually see it. I make the uh, uh, iris 